And this is the Aura Pro Smart Scanner from Caesar. Finally, a home brand that I can actually pronounce and a product name that sounds good. I work from home most of the time and often need to scan items such as receipts, tech manuals and so on, but currently I'm struggling to do that with this. My HP OfficeJet all-in-one. And no, I'm not struggling because I need to climb a ladder. This is not the problem. The problem I have is that the flatbed scanner is just really awkward to scan things, which in itself isn't the end of the world, but what is the end of the world is it just takes so much time and time is extremely valuable to me. In steps this, the Aura Pro, a smart scanner for home that will hopefully solve my problem among being able to do many other things. This will currently set you back at time of filming this video $289 which is about 230 great British pounds. Now this is not a sponsored video at all but Caesar did send me this to have a play with so thank you for supporting small creators such as myself. Now in addition to scanning work items I would love to be able to scan in some of my magic books to digitize them legally for my own use I'm my ad, but this will be totally impractical and would take weeks on a flatbed, but the Aura Pro is apparently perfect for this and for many other reasons. But before we get into those, let's find out what they give us in the box. This is the first time I've seen a box cutting tool provided, which is a very nice touch. Inside the packaging, we have the main box, which I might add looks very sexy in matte black. And when opening the box and looking under the protective cover, we see a whole lot more matte black. Oh yes, very nice indeed. In this envelope, we have the obligatory Gumpf, also known as a user manual, as well as a software CD. You don't need me to tell you because each box is nicely labeled, but in here we have the power supply and both UK and EU plugs. There is a foot pedal, which I assume is to control the scanner in some way. And then next we have an arm with two LED lights and a touch sensitive power switch. Then the main unit itself, which when folded down measures 180 by 130 by 443 millimeters and weighs 1.5 kilograms and the bottom of the stand houses the uh, power input, USB type A for the pedal and USB type B for the computer. Further down in this treasure trove of a box we then have what feels like a high quality leather mat, some finger cots, absolutely no idea what these are, and then finally a type A to type B USB cable. Caesar's website talks about this as a smart scanner for home, whilst the Amazon listing talks about it as being a portable scanner, so which is it? Well, it's actually both. The main unit folds away securely, and with the supplied mat rolled up, this could very easily be placed into a backpack, so actually you're not limited to being stuck at home at all. There are various use cases for this, so I'd recommend checking out their website, but for me, I'm going to concentrate on my needs which are scanning work documents and and hopefully being able to digitize all of my magic books. So let's get the most geeky bit out of the way before I talk about some of its features. The scanning aspect of this uses a 14 megapixel CMOS sensor and scans items A3 and smaller at 4320 by 3240 and is compatible with both Windows and Mac. The optical character recognition or OCR for short is what converts the scanned images into editable documents if this is something you need to do and is powered by Abby who have been around scanners longer than I can remember. Once scanned, your items could be saved in various formats, including Word, Excel, PDFs, and so on. And the OCR software is capable of understanding 180 plus languages. So what makes this scanner necessarily smart? Well, Remember those finger cot things? They are used to not only help flatten the book pages, they can also be used to help identify the page edge to the scanner, but you could also use your fingers for this, and both the cots and fingers should be automatically removed from the final image. The scanner uses a patented curve flattening technology, which sounds awesome, as this is where my problem with scanning books on a flatbed come from. You always get that dark, unreadable edge down the spine of the book. And get this, if I've read it right, it it knows when the page of the book has been turned so it can then scan. Crazy. And speaking of pages, it has automatic page splitting so the final document will be in the correct order. Again, something a flatbed can't do. There are two sources which provide lighting to the scan area. The built-in top foldable section which can be app controlled and adjusted with the knob and then the attached LED lights which are purposely angled to avoid glare when scanning any shiny items. And finally, this thing reports to be fast. How fast? Well, two seconds 
per page. And when combined with the auto page turning and auto scanning, I should be able to get through an average size book in no time at all. Like I said, this thing can do so much, so please do check out the detailed specs on their website, link down below. Let's go and get it set up. Physical setup is as simple as unrolling the leather mat, plugging in the cables, and then unfolding the scanner. Simples. Long press the knob to start the unit and switch between lamp or scan mode and short press again to turn it off. Next, install the software onto your computer, power the scanner on and then connect the USB cable to your computer. The scanner should be recognized and installed automatically. So then your scanning fun can begin. As well as being a nice looking mat, this is also a very important aspect to the scanner as it looks for the mat in order to assist in its smart algorithm. So from the small LCD screen on the top of the scanner arm, make sure the mat covers the entire a scan area. That's it, now you're ready to scan. I started with a simple receipt. Place the item for scanning on the mat and check it's within the scan area using the small screen on top. Open the Aura Pro software and click on scan. Choose the options which apply to what it is you're scanning and then click scan. You can then go back to the editing screen where your scanned item will be listed down the right hand side for you to then edit it or export it accordingly. Scanning a book is a similar process except this time you're going to want to line up the spine of the book with the overlay template provided on screen and then choose facing pages if this is how your book is laid out obviously. And then from the scan options on the right choose if you're using the finger cots or your fingers. Then tick auto scan at the bottom so it detects when you turn the page and away you go. Right, you have now heard about the device, seen me set it up and complete some example scans. So what do I think? The hardware itself is solid, robust and feels very well built. It looks sleek and stylish in my opinion, so it would fit the aesthetics of almost any home office, but would you have this set up 24 seven? Me personally, no, I wouldn't leave this set up 24 seven as I only scan every now and again, but the form factor means it could be left on a desk or sideboard folded up and not cost you that much space. It had no problems with scanning anything I threw at it and the foot pedal was a nice touch to be able to tell the computer to start scanning rather than having to move back to it and do it manually. The whole curve flattening technology thing was pretty good and certainly an improvement over a flatbed, but still isn't perfect, as at times I could still see curvature in some of the items, but with the progression of AI, it's literally only gonna be a short amount of time before this is perfected. The main thing I was excited to see, as I just mentioned, was the book scanning. I was able to scan 152 pages in seven minutes and 10 seconds, which is mind blowing. And the results of this were very, very good. I did opt not to use the finger cots though, because holding the pages down with these was uncomfortable and then it was really awkward when trying to turn the page. And it would have drastically increased the amount of time it took me to scan multiple pages. The cots are there to help the scanner see the edge of the page better and are easily removed, which the software did, although it did leave behind some artifacts intermittently, but having said that, the software also had zero issues with removing my fingers from the final result. So yeah, I just used my good old fingers. Once the book pages were scanned, I was able to review them in the software, select all of the pages with one tick, and then export the entire book to a PDF in under one minute. I tested the uh, OCR aspect with the receipt that I scanned in, and again, it, it was pretty good, way better than last time I dabbled with OCR a few years back. But again, it wasn't perfect, but maybe that could be due to various reasons. Perhaps if I took the time to play with lighting and tried repositioning the receipt a bit better, it would improve. But to be honest, it was absolutely fine for what I needed. And again, it can only get better with time. Things can only get better. The software, whilst not particularly attractive to look at was easy to install and use. It's functional and whilst looking basic is far from it with what it can do under the hood. I can't really fault this product. It does exactly what it says on the tin. It does exactly what it says on the tin. And it does it well, quickly and efficiently. So is this worth nearly $300? Mm, oh, well, I think honestly that's for you to decide. As I only scan intermittent work documents and want to scan a one-off book, 
I don't think it's worth that to me. And I would probably stick with a basic flatbed scanner and all of the problems that provides. But if I was scanning lots of items, multiple pages or books on a regular basis, then this would well be worth the money. Not only because it's a good solid product that offers great results, but also because of the amount of time this can save you is absolutely huge. 151 pages of a book in seven minutes. I've left the links to the various resources down below along with a discount coupon if you're interested in purchasing this. Now, if there's anything I've missed out or anything specific you want to know about this or anything else for that matter, then please do let me know in the comments box down below. And whilst you're down there, that's what he said. Please do consider liking the video, even if you didn't, subscribing if you aren't already, and hitting the bell to get notified when I upload new videos, because it really helps me out, get sent more free stuff to play with and make videos about. So yeah, thank you and thank you for watching. Goodbye, internet. Put a on me.